Look you at know, that with the turkey yeah. buzzers in the foreground. That's kind of a cool shot. That's it from yeah. the top of the VAB. Yeah, they're making the turn. And um, those Should be turkey... coming into view just soon here. They, they, they take uh, they take those thermals off the VAB all day long. Yep. And uh, they are ugly birds, but it's fun to watch them fly. And there they come in. Uh, and if if you if they pan just a little bit left, you'll be able to see us coming along there. There's the escape facility. That's the uh, self-contained. Um, apparatus for the protection of the environment or something like that. It's the yeah. guys that uh, go in there. Escape. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's the new um, yeah. uh, You're getting close mission to us. building. All right, pan up a little. Pan up a little bit, guys, and we'll wave to you. All right, you might be able to see the twent and the mound there. All of it in this shot. Be careful of the banner there, folks, Dylan, because you're going to block out. Uh, oh, okay. Well, let's uh, let's go to David now. I think we have a shot oh, of the Astro Man as it pulls up to the Launch Control Center, drops off some uh, of the... Uh, uh, the chief astronaut, uh, some of the mission managers, and now let's go to David Waters down with the tweeters. David. Parking lot from us, so we'll stay with the NASA pictures. Helicopter just coming overhead here. Chris, if you can go up to that there, you'll see the uh, Huey helicopter that we're talking about and the astronauts stopping there. So stay with that live NASA TV shot, Miles. And uh, all the tweeters are sitting there waving at the crew. I'm going to walk out. Chris, you stay right there. Uh, unfortunately, because they are so far away, they're all just standing there lined up across the road and waiting waiting for that crew to come by. It's a very dramatic moment there for them. Okay, so it's broken 5,000, it's right up. There's the Huey waiting for the crew as they come by. It'll be about a 15 minute ride out to the launch pad. And after that ride, when they arrive at the launch pad, what happens is uh, they have a USA technician who gets in the elevator with them. Two at a time, they go through the white room. Uh, that's all they can fit in the white room at a time, comfortably with the closeout crew guy that is there, USA's Travis Thompson. He'll actually be on set with us later with you, uh, Miles, talking to you about this. But he'll be helping the crew get in, and then they take another two in off the van and go through that whole process. But it's kind of a stark quarters up there at the launch pad. And Leroy, I wonder if I could bring you in here and ask you this. I, I once, I once got to uh, see the toilet at the shuttle launch pad, and I was. Uh, it was pretty unimpressed. It was just like a metal thing, but I guess it has to survive a rocket blast, right? Oh, you're talking about the. Uh, sorry, David. I missed the, the first. You're talking about the stainless steel toilet uh, there. It's oh, like oh, it, oh, up it on the 195 foot bed. level. Yeah, yeah, same yes, supplier yes. that does the federal penitentiary. You that know what? Toilet. I bet yeah. it is because yeah. it looks exactly yeah. like the the ones in the movies on the jails look. You know, oh, you've never been in a jail, of course. You <laughs> well, no, no, yeah. never convicted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, we know. But you're right. You're right, David. That has to withstand the the blast, of course, and it's. Uh, it is a place where astronauts can stop and take one last break before getting too in the shuttle. Jokes. Too and many And I got to tell you, I used it myself on three <laughs> occasions. You will learn everything here at spaceflightnow.com. Well, this, this is in the category maybe of more information you need more. to know. Halfway between here and the Launch Control Center in the parking lot is the Tweet Up Tent, the Twent. The Twent, down in the Twenches. In the Twenches. That's where we find David Waters, who's uh, been communing with the tweeters. David, how's it going there? It's going well, Miles. I'm here with uh, at AstroGirly. We're trying to give you their Twitter handles. I just realized something, though. You came over to us. Where's your BlackBerry? It's over by my stuff. So do, you, do you feel naked without this? A little bit. You just went You went out there running out with all these people. They went out and running out to go see the, uh, the astronauts. What was that like? It was a once in a lifetime experience for me, at least right now, being able to see them that close on launch day, going out to the pad. So, how much is how different is this from watching, you know, a media report, watching one of us talk about it, to actually being here, being able to talk about it? What are you learning differently here? I think today? Here, you get to see a lot more hands on what goes on than at least we're seeing it here at the media site, as compared to like where I usually view it. Um, but it's just you get this feeling of awesomeness and just being a part of it that you don't get when you watch it on TV and you appreciate it a lot more. So you don't see all of those intricate parts that you're, you guys got actually the schedule a minute by minute right. of what's going to happen right. today. And I pretty much follow minute by minute what's going on when I'm back home in Michigan, but being here just makes it more real. Why do you follow it from Michigan? What What's interesting to it? Um, I've just always been into space and NASA and the shuttle, um, human space flight, and so I've just been a nerd like that all my life. So how did you end up finding out about this? I mean, NASA said we need a bunch of members of the public who are out there actively tweeting. How did you, how did they find you? Um, I went to the 125 tweet up they had, and then Beth Beck invited me to this one before it was announced. And so it was just exciting to get involved with it. What's the next thing for you? What are you going to do next here? Um, here, just 
chilling, watching everything that's going on, meeting the people that are hands-on in, at KSC. Now, I noticed they're going to actually bring in some of the folks. We've got uh, astronaut Bob Crippen, who's coming in our show in a bit, but he's actually swung through here already, and he's going to be talking to you in a little bit. That's really exciting. Oh, you didn't know this? No, I, I knew about it, but oh. just when he gets here and as it gets closer, it gets more and more exciting. You get to see the first shuttle pilot. Have you already met astronauts now? Yes. I've met the entire, well, here I've met a few, and then like when I went to the 125 tweet up, I met some. Gotcha. Okay. We'll let you get back to your BlackBerry. I know you're, you're feeling like you haven't sent a tweet. What are you, you going to send right now? Just was on space flight now and love this experience. Thank oh. you, NASA. Excellent. All right. We're going to sneak around here. Miles, who do we have up here? Hang on a second. We'll come all the way over here. What's well, CM Floyd, right? CM Floyd. Good morning. Okay. Now, what are you doing here? Because you've got the cameras. and I, right. I'm recording this as well for friends and family. I've got a live stream going on back home so that family can see it. So they don't have to go to the NASA site, which may or may not be uh, fully accessible based on bandwidth. You never know. You never know. Now you've got the camera here. What do you? Uh, what have you been shooting with it? Today, all I've shot is just a wide scene in here, and then my other camera system that I've had, I've carried with me, or I've had on the tripod, and I've shot various scenes and various people doing all of the activities we're here with. What kind of launch updates are you sending out? What well, kind of mission update? Actually, the most recent update I just sent out had to do with waving to the astronauts. I'm a law enforcement officer in California. Kids wave to me all the time, and you get a little bit jaded, I'll say, because it happens so frequently. And today I found myself waving at astronauts, and when they wave back, I felt like a kid again, just like those kids who wave at cops every day. And I, I appreciate it now differently than I ever did before. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Let me, uh, I might actually uh, show this here. We've got, I guess USA is going to show off some hardware to the folks today. You know what, Tracy? I'm going to bring you in, Tracy Yates from United Space Alliance. What are you, what are you guys uh, showing off back here? Well, this is uh, Jamie Hart, one of our guys that works on stacking the shuttle components in the Vehicle Assembly Building. And he's brought some little pieces, parts with him from the VAB, cabling, valves, all sorts of odds and ends to show folks. Let's, let's walk over to that. Uh, one, more t one more time, what's your name again? James Hart. Okay, walk, walk over here and show us what you're trying to show these folks in here, if you can. Up and show it around. That's a frangible nut that holds the SRBs down. There's eight of them. What's that? Can you pick that up for us? All right, now this is from the hold down post. Now, this is what has explosive bolts at liftoff time and at T0. This is the bolt that blows? That's correct. So, how many bolts are there? Is it is eight on the solid rocket boosters between both? There's four on each solid rocket okay. boosters, eight total. So that holds up the entire stack. Let, let's show this. By the way, this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very delicate because there's actual space hardware here, but this is the nut we're talking about, which means the screw for it, huge. But this has to hold the, uh, the boosters in place. That's what's attaching it to the pad. Yeah, it holds the boosters. It holds the external tank and the shuttle. This holds everything up. And how heavy is that? That's a pretty hefty thing. Yeah, it's about 20 pounds. So you put the, the explosives are where? In here and here? There and there. There's two pressure cartridges. Chris, come on in close, and you can see where the nut actually it blows apart right here. And you've got a couple explosives just as a safety, right? Yeah, there's an A and a B side. And in case one side doesn't fire, the other side will take it out. All right, one more time. Spell your name just so we can get you right on. What is it? Uh, James. Hart, H-A-R-T. Okay, James Hart. Now, uh, show us some of these other pieces here. Now, oh, this is the, uh, this is actually the piece of the, uh, the blown frangible nut. This is what happens when it comes apart. Uh, I'm going to actually just for a moment here to show you here, and that's what's going to happen today at liftoff time. So, Miles and Leroy, uh, pretty good-looking explosion that takes that out.